Hello everyone. Welcome to Hatha Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. Let's just take a moment sitting down. If you'd like to sit on something besides the ground, feel free to grab a prop that might be useful to just feel more open in your hips. Especially if your knees are lifting uncomfortably away from the ground, you can elevate your pelvis so that it is higher than your knees. And do any shifting that you may need so that you can arrive at stillness in a moment. Whether that's circling the spine and just feeling the surface below your pelvis. Or rolling out your shoulders or gently circling your head. Maybe visually orient yourself to your own space and notice the textures and colors that surround you and that attract you. And then in resting your hands wherever it's comfortable for you to feel more grounded, whether that's on your lap or on the ground itself, maybe a hand to your heart, a hand to your belly. And you might choose to close your eyes if that helps you to just pay more attention now to your own body, to your own breath, to your own mind. Just notice the breath in its own natural flow without having to arrange it in any way. In today's practice, we'll be practicing quite a bit of neutral witnessing throughout the layers of self, the koshas. As you know that this is the last day of this week that we're highlighting the eighth limb of yoga, which is Samadhi. Often known as that bliss state that naturally emerges over time of consistent study meditation practice. And just to describe a little more of Samadhi, here's a section in Wheels of Life, a book written by Anodeya Judith, PhD. Transcendence brings liberation from the traps of illusion so that we can enter into a state of bliss and freedom. It is generally the ego that forms these attachments to maintain its sense of selfhood and safety but that self is a smaller, more limited self, apart from the underlying unity of consciousness from which we are made. Imminence is the awareness of the divine within, where transcendence is the awareness of the divine without. Imminence brings us intelligence, illumination, inspiration, radiance, power, connection, and finally manifestation. True self-knowledge is to understand that transcendence and imminence are complementary and that inner and outer worlds are indelibly one. So feeling into your layers of being, the more external denser layers, the physical body, and then a little more subtle in that inward, your energetic being, which can be affected by our thoughts and emotions, what we feed our senses. Noticing your mental and emotional body, the third layer in. It's present there right now. And then the last two layers are koshas, according to yoga philosophy is the wisdom body known as Vishna Namaya Kosha. And it's that developed discernment, the wisdom seat of being able to witness and understand the impermanence of thoughts and emotions and remembering that we are not our thoughts and emotions. And then even most subtle layer is what's called Ananda Maya Kosha, the spiritual self. 
So in today's meditation later on, at the end of our physical practice, we'll dive a little deeper into witnessing these various layers to the extent that you can. Now let's focus on the first three. Feeling your body breathe. Allow a deeper inhale to slowly expand down into your belly. You allow your spine to get a little taller, but not rigid. And exhaling through your mouth, allow whispering sound. <sighs> sort of like you're fogging a mirror. <sighs> Arrive at the very end of that. And then again, a deeper inhalation. Now filling up your belly, your lungs, so that the four walls of your rib cage gently expand. Arriving at the top of the breath, hold a moment, a few seconds. Empty your shoulders. And then again, like you're fogging a mirror, whisper out to your mouth. <sighs> Keeping the crown of your head lifted as your belly hollows inward towards your spine. Empty the breath and hold it out a few seconds. And then this time, inhaling for one chant of Om, creating resonance as we practice together in community. Inhale, fill up a little slower if you can from the belly to the chest, from the front body, the back body, the sides. And then when you're ready, oh. Let's dive into Ujjayi Pranayama. Just beginning to even the breath in and out through your nose. If you can, closing your lips, empty this breath. And then slowly inhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale through the nose, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Inhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Counting on your own a couple more times. And now can you create a very subtle whispering sound as you breathe out to your nose by softly narrowing the back of your throat to a gentle whisper. And you could probably hear it as you inhale as well, the breath rushing past the back of your throat. Taking your time to reach the full capacity of that inhalation of your lungs. And the complete emptying. And notice how you feel as you're now altering your breath from the natural state in which you arrived here in this practice to now using a breathing technique. Do you feel any slight shift in your body, in your mind, or how you feel energetically? We're going to continue with such self-inquiry as we begin to move the body, really tuning into the different layers of self, the koshas. But now as you continue with the breath, in and out through the nose, whispering sound. Please release your hands and gently flutter your eyes open. And we'll just start to move in a few rounds of cat cows, coming down to hands and knees, setting your knees slightly behind your hips, like a couple inches back, and then your wrists right under your shoulders. Start at your own pace. So on your next inhale, begin to Lengthen your sternum forward to your upper arms before coiling your chest up, arriving at the top of the breath. The shoulders drop back. 
And in the entire exhale, you're contracting your belly, tucking your tailbone downward, dropping your skull to round your back. feeling the synchronization of your own breath and your movement in and out of this pose. Or these two poses. So about three to five more cycles of breath. Remembering to take everything at your own pace of breath, even though I'm cueing let my cues be merely suggestions. Now that we're adding movement to link with your breath, do you feel anything here? Anything different in your mind state, your energetic state? On your exhale, relax to a neutral spine. And then please take your two blocks, setting them just in front of your hands so that they are, let's start with a second level height. So here's the lowest, second, and then third level. Medium height, second level, like a number 11 in front of you. Separate your blocks so that they are your shoulders width apart. And then lean back onto your shins for a moment and extend your arms forward, palms face down. And rotate your outer upper arms towards the ground so it's an external rotation of your upper arm bones so that it causes your palms to turn to face each other maybe even towards the sky now keep doing that so you can broaden your shoulder blades across your back ribs and plug your shoulder blades down away from your neck and then walk towards the blocks with your knees so that you can plant your elbows stably on top of each block elbow shoulders width apart Keep wrapping your triceps downward and then press your fingertips into each other so there's space between your palms. Then from here, adjust your knees. They may need to walk back a little bit more so that they're slightly behind your hips. Trace your thumbs down the back of your skull towards the back of your neck, maybe even towards between your shoulder blades, however far they'll go. And allow your chest to sink towards the ground as you drop your head, whatever degree it can drop. Now, lifting your belly slightly, try to keep your abdomen gently engaged here so you're not completely letting the belly just dump down. You're offering a lifting support towards your spine. As you take about five more deep, even breaths, soft whisper through the nose. Can you draw your hips further back? so that they stack, or they try to stack, just above your knees. Can you draw your shoulders further back so you feel spaciousness at your neck? Collarbones broaden, shoulder blades broaden apart. Taking your time with each breath. And on your next exhalation, as you're ending the out breath, draw in your navel, a little more contraction of the belly to start to rise off of the blocks. Put the blocks aside so they're on the outside edges of your mat. And then come back to all fours, hands and knees. With your knees slightly behind your hips, your wrists right under your shoulders, parallel your index fingers, both facing forward. And find a slight gripping underneath each fingertip very slight gripping. Root the base of your thumbs, the base of your index fingers. Continue to rotate your outer upper arms back and towards the ground. And then tuck your toes, feet hips width apart. Lift your hips as high as you can towards your rear wall and downward facing duck. Now feel free to take a few breaths here to shift in any way you need to move your body before we hold still for a few breaths. Like you might want to pedal your feet in place, help to loosen up the backs of your legs. And with that, perhaps swivel your hips left and right. Open up the sides of your waist and outer hips. 
maybe even exploring moving your skull in different directions to relax your neck. Keep lifting your shoulders up, back away from your neck. Feel your belly slightly draw in towards your spine, giving it support to lengthen. And now notice if it's helpful to bend your knees, maybe even a lot here in the beginning, so that you can truly feel length in the front and the back of your spine, as if you have a flat back. Your shoulders are free away from your neck. Your head is completely dropped and just relaxed. And now steady your eyes on one spot towards the your feet on the ground, parallel your feet so that you cannot see the inner edges of your heels from where you are. And then can you find these contrasting forces of rooting down through those suction cup tip fingers with a bit of pressing the mat away from your feet while lifting your hips further up, further back, and then sinking your heels closer to the ground, even if they don't touch the floor, while drawing in your belly. Triceps rotating towards the floor. We've got three more breaths, holding still here in Adho Mukha Svanasa. Tuning into your physical layer. How's this pose affecting energetically? And then begin to walk your feet forward towards the top of your mat so that you arrive in Uttanasana, forward folds. Separating your feet at least hips width apart, parallel your second toes to each other. And then shift your weight forward so that it lands heavier at the front edges of your heels. Again, you can bend your knees any amount here. Catch hold of opposite elbows with your hands. Drop your head and maybe even explore swaying your spine side to side, knowing that the more you bend your knees, the more your spine might unwind and feel supported to relax. Feel your breath in. Match the length of your breath out. Switch the cross of your elbow on top. Maybe even shake and nod your head a few times as you're lifting your shoulders up away from your neck. Let the crown of your head fall even heavier towards the earth. Weight shifting forward, spreading your toes without gripping the mat. Now keep at least a slight bend in your knees. Press your fingertips either on blocks about a foot in front of your feet or the ground or your shins. And inhale, draw your heart forward through the gates of your arms, looking towards the tip of your nose in Ardha Uttanasana. With an exhale, belly firms in as you hinge from your hips, maybe folding a little deeper, Uttanasana. One more time, inhale, press with your fingertips, create some traction as you lengthen the crown of your head towards your front wall. Let the shoulders slide back, long neck, long sides of the torso, Exhale, take that with you in a forward fold. Firming down to your feet, inhale, sweep your arms out to the sides, rise to the pace of the breath. Let your palms meet overhead at the top of the inhale, looking up. With an exhale, trace your thumbs down the midline of your body as though you're blessing yourself, thanking yourself for committing to your practice today, for showing up. Arms by your sides, mountain pose. Let's take two rounds of Ardha Surya Namaskar, half sun salutation. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead, keeping your shoulders relaxed down as you look up, let your palms touch. Exhale, hinging from your hips, belly firms in, knees can bend any amount, try to maintain sort of a flat back. Press with your fingertips, inhale, draw your spine even further forward. Keep the weight forward, Exhale, hinge from your hips. Press down to your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms. Rise to the pace of your breath. See your palms touch. Exhale, tracing your midline into mountain pose. 
One last time, inhale, sweep your arms into Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, rise halfway into Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bow in to Uttanasana. Grab one of your blocks while you're here and inhale, rise up, arms overhead in Urdhva Hastasana. So now sandwich that one block, the widest width of it between your palms and see if you can do so without gripping. So the thumbs are not gripping, but your hands are flat. Fingers are together here and then plug your shoulder bones deeper into your shoulder sockets and notice as you're lifting your arms, do your front ribs begin to pop out like mine like to do? If so, can you draw them in towards the back of your body so that you're lengthening the back and the front of your spine and your tailbone is anchoring right towards the ground between your heels. Now, even as you press to your feet, spreading your toes, can you root down and let the energy rebound up through your fingertips, up through the crown of your head, but empty your shoulders. If your shoulders are really tensing up towards your ears, you can always put your arms a little more forward, not so far up. Take another deep breath. Keep pressing down with your left foot, especially, and exhale, begin to side bend to your right a few breaths. When you inhale, pause where you are in this range, and can you stretch both the left and the right sides of your torso while maintaining space in your neck? And then as you exhale, maybe even side bend further. Feel your lower belly engage, the shoulder blades moving down your back. Perhaps look up towards the sky past your left arm. One more breath. On an inhale, slowly rise all the way up. Plug the shoulder blades further down. Exhale, side bend to your left. Now keeping your right foot even heavier as you move to the left. Breathe in, lengthen from your outer hips to your armpits. Breathe out, keep reaching to the left. Hug in your front ribs, anchor your tailbone towards your inner heels, and melt your shoulders down your back. One more breath. Next inhale, slowly rise all the way up. Now keep pressing your palms into that block and imagine you have a second block you're squeezing between your elbows. Begin to bend your elbows towards your front wall let your fingertips point towards your rear wall to whatever degree. Some of you might be able to place that block behind your skull, maybe even the base of your skull like a pillow. Now keep pressing your hip bones forward, lengthening your tailbone downward, front ribs hug in, and then begin to roll your shoulder heads back. Begin to create a back bend here right underneath your shoulder blade. Focus on that contraction so that you can lift your chest and begin to look up so that block can help support your head from just collapsing back. Lengthen the back of your neck. Let's take three more deep breaths, full expansion of your lungs. Notice what you're feeling here, physical body, mental, emotional body, energetic body. Bending your knees. Begin to sit back into chair pose with your feet still apart, parallel, thighs apart, parallel, and then extend your arms forward as you hug that block. Can you draw your shoulders further into their sockets? Maybe sit a little deeper as you glide your shin bones back. Feel your quadriceps activate. Lower belly activates. Two more breaths. Relaxing your eyes, even though you're steadying them on one spot. Notice what thoughts might come up here. And as you exhale, hinge forward from your hips, put the block aside. Plant your fingertips outside of your heels. Inhale, step your left knee back. Exhale, scissor your right hip back, flex your right toes up and come into a half split, folding over your right leg. Inhale, rebend your right knee to stack just over your heel. Plant the sole of the foot in a lunge, look forward. 
Again, exhale, scissor your right hip back. Straighten your front leg as you flex the foot. And slowly fold forward. Two more rounds of breath. Inhale, lunge. Chest wide open. Exhale, half split. Both hips evenly facing forward. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, half split. Now returning to that lunge, please step your right foot about three more inches to the right. Bring your right arm inside of your right leg so we can further focus on your outer right hip, flexing your right foot. Gently splay open your right thigh so that you start to lean on the knife outer edge, the pinky toe edge of your right foot without collapsing onto the outer ankle. And you feel your breath encourage your chest to broaden forward. And you use your exhales to remind areas of tension to soften if they don't need to be there. Perhaps you explore coming down onto your forearms, whether you're using blocks or they're on the floor. As we take about four more breaths, just paying attention to whatever arises, not only physical sensations, but what's called felt sense. It's a more subtle and often described more metaphorically, like through textures or colors. pulsation, energetic movement, spiraling, radiating energy out or in. Just noticing what you notice here. One more deep breath in lizard lunge. And then let's step back into downward facing duck. Lifting your hips high, find that slight gripping under your fingertips. Downward dog. Next inhale, glide forward into your plank pose, pausing there for three breaths. Shoulders are right on top of your wrists. Look forward on the ground. Knees can be on the ground or legs straight with your heels actively firming back. Now keeping your belly active, chest broadening forward exhale slowly glide forward then bend your elbows to hug your side ribs passing through chaturanga dandasana come all the way down interlace your fingers behind your lower back point your toes and press every toenail into the floor lengthen your tailbone actively towards your inner heels and on your next inhale peel your chest wide open off the ground and draw your shoulder blades down towards your waist. And take another four breaths here in bound locust pose. Now by looking towards the ground ahead of you, find space in the back of your neck. Can you allow a sense of buoyancy across your chest at your heart space? Feet are parallel as you're pressing every toenail down. Reach the knuckles of your hands towards your heels, blossoming your chest open for the last inhalation here. And as you exhale, plant your hands alongside your floating ribs, press up into your version of plank, contracting your belly to lift your hips into downward facing dog. Let's take three deep breaths. Feel stability through your palms as you inhale to raise your right leg back. Exhaling, bend your right knee and rotate your thigh open at the hip. 
As you inhale, stay here, but tack your left hip further back. Shoulders are equally facing the ground. Inhale. Then exhale, bend your right knee towards your nose so that you contract your belly, rounding into plank pose before softly stepping your right foot directly between your hands for warrior two. Spin your left heel to the floor. Align your right heel to the arch of your left foot. Press through your feet and windmill your arms to rise up, standing. In warrior two, feel your right thigh externally rotate so that the sitting bone rotates underneath your body. As you bend your front knee to stack over the heel, knee and middle toe are facing forward. Feel the contrast of your left thigh internally rotated, slightly facing the front of your mat. As you straighten your left leg and firm the top of your left femur, thigh bone, towards the right edge of your mat. Slightly lifting your frontal hip bones, Find full length throughout your spine as you open your arms wide, steadying your gaze, just past your right fingertips. Do you notice any areas of unneeded tension in here? Maybe in the face, maybe in the shoulders, maybe in the breath. Consciously balancing effort with ease. Last two breaths in Virabhadrasana two. Pressing through both feet, straighten your right leg. You might like to shorten your stance two to three inches for triangle pose. Glide your hips sideways towards the rear edge of your mat. Reach your right arm towards your front wall as far as you can reach before lowering that hand onto your right shin or just to the right of your right leg on a block of the floor, pressing the arm and leg against each other. Now continue to wrap your right sitting bone under your body. Can you lengthen the right underside of your torso here by sending the crease of your right hip back towards the rear edge of your mat? Raising your left arm up high Spiral your chest slightly to face the sky and perhaps you're gazing up past your left thumb unless that does not feel okay on your neck. The shoulders find ease away from your neck. Four more breaths in Uttita Trikanasana. You notice anything with your felt sense while in this asana? a temperature change, sensation that might be described as a type of texture. Feel your breath circulating. On your next inhale, look down just ahead of your right toes. Exhale, lower your left hand on the inside of your front leg. Pivot your left foot to face forward. Inhale here. And exhale, step the left foot forward. Arrive at the top of your mat, forward fold. Feet hips distance apart. Press your legs to the ground. Inhale, lift your chest and look forward. Exhale, fold in. From down to your feet, inhale, sweep your arms. Pace yourself with your in-breath. Palms touch, exhale, trace your thumbs down your midline. Tadasana or mountain pose. Side two, inhale, sweep your arms high and perhaps this time you add a little back bend, coiling your chest up. Exhale, fold forward, belly firms in. Inhale, lower your fingertips outside your feet, step your right knee back. Exhale, scissor your left hip back, flex your left toes off the ground as you straighten your front leg and bow, half split. Moving in and out, inhale, re-bend your left knee into a lunge, 
broaden your chest forward. Exhale, scissor your left hip back. Half split. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, half split. Your pace of breath, one more round. And as you return to a lunge, step your left foot about three more inches to the left, bring your left arm inside of your left leg, coming into lizard lunge for your outer hip. Flexing your left foot, splay open your left thigh to just lean the knife outer edge onto the floor, not the outer ankle. Feel your breath, encourage opening across your collarbones, across your heart space. Let your left outer hip draw back and perhaps explore lowering onto your forearms, blocks or no blocks. Four more breaths. What do you tend to pay more attention to? Which layer of self? Is it the densest part, your physical body, Anamaya Kosha? Is it a more subtle part, your mental and emotional body? Is it energetic body? Is it yourself as the witness of all of these? An even subtler layer. Start to step back into downward facing dog, lifting your hips, finding full length of your spine as you drop your head. From downward dog, inhale forward into your plank pose. Exhale, carefully glide forward and down into Chaturanga Dandasana all the way down. This time, please grab a block. Point your toes. We're going to take a different version of the same pose we did earlier which is locust pose. Take that block in front, in front of you, hug it between your palms. Again, try not to grip the mat with your fingers or your thumbs. Extend your arms forward, lower your forehead to the floor. And then as you're raising your arms overhead, plug your shoulder bones into your shoulder sockets. We did this standing up earlier, but point your toes and try to press firmly down with all toenails. Keep your legs parallel. Tailbone is reaching back towards the inner heels. And then as you inhale, begin to coil your chest off the floor, lightly lifting your head so that your upper arms rise to align with your ears. Plug your shoulder blades back, wrap your triceps down, maybe start to lift your legs as you keep them straight. Another three or more breaths, your count. Though your glutes will engage in this pose, try not to over-engage the glutes. If you have lower back issues, you might want to keep your feet on the floor or take cobra pose instead. Find space throughout your neck as you open your chest forward. And when you decide that you're done, put the block aside, lower your feet and enter cobra or upward facing duck. A deep inhale or a few breaths there. Let's meet in downward facing duck. Three deep breaths in Adho Mukha Svanasana. Just noticing what might feel different this time in this pose. Each new experience brings something different to the plate, even though it's the same posture. Similarly, each time we sit in meditation, we've gone through different things. We've got something perhaps a little different to observe in our minds. And during inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Exhale, bend your left knee, rotate the thigh open at your hip. 
Staying here, inhale, tack your right outer hip back. Then exhale, contract your belly round knee to nose. And very quietly as you can, step the left foot right between your hands. Spin your right heel down. Align your left heel to the arch of your right foot. Preparing for warrior two, cartwheel your arms to rest. So notice that your right leg, your back leg is rotated inward slightly. As you straighten that leg and firm the top of the thigh bone towards the left edge of your mat, you're rotating your front leg outward. So the sitting bone rotates under as you bend the front knee right on top of the heel, knee and middle toe face forward. Feel out the orientation of your pelvis, which is shaped like a bowl. Can you align it as upright and neutral through the strength of your lower belly? Tall spine, arms wide open. Feel the reach through your fingertips. A lot of life force energy in your hands. Steadying your eyes, just past your left hand. Mental scan of your physical body. How are you balancing effort and ease there? Scan of your thoughts. Anything that might arise in emotions that postures could bring up. Notice how you're breathing and circulating prana, life force, through the breath. Two more breaths. Then straighten your front leg. Prepare for triangle, perhaps by slightly shortening your stance, two to three inches. Glide your hips towards the rear edge of your mat. Reach your left hand towards your front wall as far as you can before lowering that hand onto your left leg or just to the left of your leg so that your arm and leg could press against each other. Keep rolling your left outer hip underneath your body and as you raise your right arm up, spiral your chest slightly towards the sky. Find one point to gaze at. Is there any part of your body that needs to be adjusted right now so that your breath can feel more fluid? It could be lifting your left hand a little higher than where you placed it. It could be the slight action of drawing your left hip crease back towards your right outer heel and lengthening your crown towards your front wall. About three more breaths. Inhale, look down at your left foot. Exhale, lower your right hand on the right side of your front leg. Pivot your right foot to face the front of your mat and step it forward top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. Exhale, fold in. Bend your knees together, feet together. Sit back into chair pose. Join your hands together at your heart. Shoulders roll back and down. Keep sitting in chair. Can you feel your belly activate? Can you feel your legs enliven? Spreading your toes, shift your weight onto your left foot, and then begin to lift your right foot flexed. Come all the way up to stand on your left leg and rotate your right thigh open for tree. Hugging the sole of your right foot on the inside of your left ankle, calf or thigh, Feel out the orientation of your pelvic bowl and can you try to level the left and right sides? A slight lift of your frontal hip bones. Press into the ground with that intention of anchoring yourself so that you can feel more confident to expand, to rise. 
with any variation of your arms in Vrikshasana. Notice the quality of your breathing in this posture. If your balance might feel challenged, notice how your mind reacts to that. Or vice versa, if the challenge comes easily, how does the mind react? Filling up with one more inhalation. With your exhalation, join your hands, set your right foot next to the left, standing in mountain pose, hands in prayer. Bend your knees, let your knees come together. Inhale into Utkatasana again, chair pose. Keep breathing here, just allow a few more breaths. Shin bones glide back, fronts of your thighs activate, lower belly activates, shoulders relax. Even in such a fire-inducing pose, a heating pose, can you feel a balance of inner cool, inner calm? Join your hands at your heart. Shift your weight onto your right foot and spread the toes. Press into the ground with the right foot as you flex the left foot off the ground and rise to stand on one leg. Turn out your left leg at the hip, roll the sitting bone down, and then hug the inside of your right ankle, calf, or thigh. Vrikshasana, tree pose. Feel into your left and right hips and how they support your center. Feel into the stacking of your shoulder girdle above your pelvic girdle above your right ankle. Feel the counter forces that create wholeness of rooting down to rise up. Feel all these parts working as a team. Two more breaths. Even the wobbliness, how can you benefit from it when it happens? Keep the nail, bring your hands together at your heart, and step your left foot next to the right. So from here, let's come on down to sit and get a little bit more into our hips taking your right shin and place it either in front or on top of your left shin. And it might be helpful here to sit on a block, pillow, or blanket if you feel like you're rounding automatically in your back. And then if you, your shins are able to stack where your knees and ankles are right on top of each other, then you are in double pigeon pose. Make sure that you support your knees there and flex the feet. Flexing the feet is different from sickling. Sickling is where you can look at the soles of your feet like this. Flexing, can't see the soles. And then ground your sitting bones, lift up the front and back of your spine, empty your shoulders, take a deep breath. Keep your heart space wide open so that it leads you into a forward fold. Walking your hands forward to your own degree, breath by breath. What's your energetic tendency in a pose? You tend to go all in and the extra mile and really try to find past your edge. You tend to shy away from the edge and back off way into the foreground or somewhere in between. And this isn't to judge yourself, good, bad, or whatever. 
It's just to be more aware. Tendencies might be coming into play here as we take three more breaths. So you feel ready with an inhale, keeping a sense of a flat back. Walk your hands towards you to rise. And extend your legs forward, roll out your ankles or point your toes, whatever can feel like release. Switch the cross, so left shin, forward or on top of right shin. Is that mirroring you? And if your ankles and knees will stack, be sure to flex your feet to stabilize your knees. Rounding your sitting bones, lift up through the front and back of your spine, deep breath. Belly slightly firms in. As you exhale, begin to fold. Just finding your own pace, your own degree. And observing whatever comes up through that journey within the pose. On your next inhale, keep the belly firm and slowly rise up. Once again, extend your legs forward, shake them out in any way you need. And then this time, stepping your left foot just in front of your left hip. Back stroke your left hand to the ground behind your pelvis. Flex your right foot, that's straight in front. Inhale, lift your spine, ground through both sitting bones. And then exhale, rotate your chest to the left. Inhale, lift your spine. Crown of the head remains stacked above your tailbone. Exhale, continue to twist. If you want to add some leverage, hook your right elbow outside of your left thigh. Make sure your shoulders are still relaxed down. Chest is wide open. Two more breaths. The end of your exhale, unwind your spine, drop your left knee open, bring the sole of the foot to the inside of your right thigh and raise your left arm. Flexing your right foot still, breathe in, lift up. Exhale, twist to your right and then fold diagonally forward in that direction. Placing your left hand against your right leg, maybe catching hold of your outer foot if that's reachable. Send your shoulders down, lift your heart slightly, and press your left sitting bone deeper towards the ground. Just two more breaths. Revolved head to knee pose, or Parita Janushasana. And belly supporting the back here. Inhale, slowly rise. Extend your left leg forward, flex the foot, step your right foot just in front of the hip. Back stroke your right hand to the ground behind your pelvis. Sit up a little taller as you breathe in. Twist to your right as you breathe out. Press downward to sit up a little taller as you breathe in. Continue to twist as you breathe out. If you want to add leverage, hook your left elbow outside of your right thigh. Keep your shoulders relaxed, chest open. Two more breaths. At the end of your exhalation, unwind your spine, drop your right thigh open, hug high inside of your left thigh with the sole of your right foot, and raise your right arm. Keep flexing your left foot, sit up a little taller as you breathe in. First, rotate your chest to your left, and then exhale, fold forward diagonally. You can press 
the back of your right hand against your outer left leg or catch the outer foot if that's reachable. Plug your right sitting bone towards the earth. Extend your sternum towards the upper left corner of your room. Shoulders relax as you fold some more. And on your next inhale, slowly rise up. Ah, setting up here for Shavasana. If you need an extra minute to come into shoulder stand or a different cooling posture like happy baby, feel free. But if you are ready to set up for Shavasana, one way if you have lower back uh, tightness to help relieve it is to place your blocks or pillow or rolled up blanket right across your mat underneath the backs of your knees so that it supports a gentle bend in your knees. And then splaying the feet apart a little wider than hips distance. Come onto your back. And once there, use your thumbs to frame the left, uh, to, to frame your mid spine and trace down the left and right alongside your spine towards the flesh of your glutes to encourage length in your lower back. It's like you're releasing the flesh of your glutes down the backs of your knees. And then rotate your upper arms externally so your palms face up. Walk your shoulder blades down your back ribs and place the backs of your shoulders heavily on the floor as you rest your arms just slightly away from your thighs. Gently move your skull making sure your neck is loose and free. Finding the natural curvature of your neck as you relax your head. For those of you that are already situated for corpse pose, I invite you to take three last long exhalations through the mouth with me. We'll inhale five counts through the nose We'll exhale seven counts through the mouth, helping to further relax the nervous system. So empty this breath, hold it out for a moment. Imagine breathing from tailbone to crown, inhales five, four, three, two, one. Exhale through the mouth, seven, from the crown to the tailbone, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, tailbone to crown, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale down, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last time, inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, let the breath go. Natural breathing, body relaxed and still. Consciousness, awake and observance.
a little bit more from Wheels of Life, the most characteristic quality of transcendent consciousness is its emptiness. Therefore, we enter it by letting go of attachment. Transcendence carries us beyond the ordinary to the broad expanse of unity. The observer is participant. There is no separation between self and the world, and no sense of time. Just as the emptiness of a cup allows it to be filled, the emptiness of our minds allows a clear channel through which to experience transcendence. If you'd like to join me for several minutes, about 10 minutes of guided meditation. Please begin to move your fingers and toes. There's no rush to come out of stillness. In fact, can you carry a quality of inner stillness as you gently begin to move your body out of Shavasana? So all that accumulation of postures and breath work and focus we've been doing in the past hour doesn't come to end here. In fact, we take all of that sort of inner calm, that observe, observant way of being into this transition into a seated pose. Sukhasana. Allow a moment to use any props that you might need so that your body feels supported, alert, relaxed in the position you'll choose to meditate in. Make any loving adjustments to feel symmetry in the left and right sides of your body, both shoulders relaxed, both sitting bones grounded. Feel the full length of your spine, allowing breath to naturally flow in and out. Decide how you'd like to place your hands so that you can feel comfortable to tune in. Whether the palms are lying face down in your lap, a hand to the heart, a hand to the belly, or stacking the palms, maybe the thumbs touch, whatever works for you. And then choose to either close your eyes or rest a soft, steady gaze on one spot. And as you ground yourself through posture and the setup of your body and your eyes, begin to feel the parts of your body in contact with the surface below. So though I use words to direct this meditation, because that's all I have here, I invite you to feel more, as much as you can with outwards, if that makes any sense, more abstractly, more intuitively to the areas I point out. So you feel the distribution of weight to those points of contact of your physical body and the surface below. Notice any sensations in the lower portion of your body, physical. Even notice, like I mentioned earlier, through your felt sense, something more metaphorical. So you could describe sensations with colors or textures. You feel any textures within the body.
or energy flowing, moving. Moving outward, moving downward, or upward or circular. So through felt sense, you attune more to your energetic body known as pranamaya kosha. Continue to scan up your body. Just noticing whatever might call your attention. So we are cultivating a neutral witness here. Letting go of any tendency to name anything good or bad or better or worse. Simply feeling into what, what's present. Noticing what you feel in your head or around your head. Noticing if you don't feel anything as well. Is there a thought that's pervasive right now? A thought that's subtle? Or a chain of thoughts, one leading to another, rippling into a story? Just notice. You start to feel entangled in the thoughts out of the present moment. Remember, you can simply let go of following them and just come back to your seat as observer. Notice, is there any emotion present? And if so, is there a felt sense where you can locate that emotion in your body? Do thoughts begin to form around the emotion, creating stronger emotion? Notice your breathing. If 
feel if it's been affected by what you've observed. So we've gradually been exploring physical, energetic, mental and emotional. As you soften deeper into the state of witnessing it all, you might find an inner calm, an inner feeling of coming home to yourself. The part that just accepts it all and doesn't have to run after any of it. The wisdom self, Vishnana Maya Kosha. See if you might be able to rest in that seat. in deep states of contentment, peaceful resonance with your inner self. You might even feel the essence of an inner smile, a sort of radiance, confidence that all is good, perhaps touching glimpses or that deepest layer of self, Ananda Maya Kosha. Known as the spiritual self. Gently allow your breath to deepen from tailbone up your spine to the crown of your head. Exhaling from the crown of your head down your spine to the base. Bringing your palms to meet at your heart as you bow in to close this practice. But remember, what are we practicing for? It's to hopefully have these tools accessible in daily life, especially in moments when we might feel triggered or we might feel distant from that inner peace. So bowing in, perhaps thanking yourself for strengthening this muscle of connection within. Let's close with one chant of Om. Take a deep breath. Om. The life.
lie in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.